Hello, this revision video is all about cereal, bread and potatoes, aka carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are polymers containing carbon, hydrogen and oxygen used for long and short term energy storage as well as structural functions. The first class of carbohydrate is monosaccharides, meaning one sugar. These are the basic monomers that make up large carbohydrates. They have the general formula CH2O-N, where N can be 3, 5 or 6. Monosaccharides with three carbon atoms are called triosugars. Those with five carbon atoms are called pentosugars. For example, ribose sugar found in RNA and ATP. However, the most important type of monosaccharide that we need to know about is those with six carbon atoms, giving the term hexose. The three main hexoses are glucose, fructose and galactose, all of which have the chemical formula C6H12O6. You do not need to be able to draw the structure of fructose or galactose, but you will need to recognise and know how to draw the two isomers of glucose, known as alpha-glucose and beta-glucose. First, I will draw alpha-glucose. It is basically a hexagon consisting of oxygen in the top right corner and five carbon atoms. The sixth carbon atom is attached to carbon number five along with H2OH and another H. Then you add HOH, HOH, OHH and HOH to carbons number one, two, three and four. Beta-glucose is basically the same apart from this H and OH on carbon number one which are swapped round in, or inverted. I like to remember this using the phrase beat her up because in beta-glucose the OH is up, it's on the top. The next class of carbohydrate are disaccharides, meaning double sugar. They are formed from two monosaccharides that join together in a condensation reaction, releasing a molecule of water. There are three disaccharides that you need to know. Maltose is made from two molecules of alpha glucose. Sucrose is made from fructose and glucose. And lactose is made from glucose and galactose. Notice that all three contain glucose. I'm now going to draw the condensation reaction between two alpha glucose molecules to form maltose. This bond here is called a glycosidic bond. Due to losing that molecule of water, maltose and the two other disaccharides have the chemical formula C12H22O11. The Benedict's test can be used to test for reducing sugars, which includes all monosaccharides as well as the disaccharides maltose and lactose, but not sucrose. The term reducing sugar basically means that it is able to reduce the blue to copper sulfate in Benedict's solution to red copper oxide. All you need to do is add Benedict's reagent to your sample and heat it in a water bath that has just been brought to the boil. If the test is positive, a coloured precipitate will be produced. The exact colour will depend on the concentration of reducing sugar present, so it can range from green to brick red. A more accurate way of comparing the amount of reducing sugar in samples is filtering the solution and weighing the precipitate. The larger the mass, the more the reducing sugar present. To test for non-reducing sugars such as sucrose, you need to first hydrolyse the glycosidic bond by boiling the sample with an equal volume of dilute HCl for a few minutes. Then add sodium hydrogen carbonate solution to neutralise the HCl. Finally, test with Benedict's reagent as previously described and a coloured precipitate will be produced if a non-reducing sugar was originally present. Polysaccharides are carbohydrates formed when more than two monosaccharides join. Now we will look at some of the most important polysaccharides in biology, starting with starch. Starch is formed from two different polysaccharide chains, amylose and amylopectin. Amylose is a long, unbranched chain of alpha-glucose with a coiled structure almost like a cylinder caused by the angles of the glycosidic bonds. Amylopectin is a long, branched chain of alpha-glucose that fits inside the amylose helix. 
The function of starch is to store excess glucose in plants and it is adapted to this in many ways. Firstly, its compact shape makes it great for storage as more can be stored in a small space. Secondly, the side branches on amylopectin give it a large surface area, allowing the enzymes that break down the molecule to reach the glycosidic bonds easily, so that glucose can be released quickly. Thirdly, starch is insoluble, therefore it doesn't affect water potential within cells. The iodine test can be used to detect the presence of starch. Add two drops of iodine dissolved in potassium iodide solution to a 2 cm cubed test sample. And if starch is present, there will be a colour change from orange to blue-black. Glycogen is a polysaccharide used to store excess glucose in animals as small grains in the muscles and the liver. It has a similar structure to amylopectin, that is, long branch chain of alpha-glucose, except there are loads more side branches coming off of it. These side branches mean that the stored glucose can be released quickly due to the large surface area. Like starch, glycogen also is insoluble, therefore it is osmotically inert, plus it has a compact shape. Cellulose is a structural polysaccharide found in plant cell walls. It is formed from long, unbranched chains of beta-glucose. Every second monomer is rotated 180 degrees so that the OH groups end up next to one another for the condensation reaction to take place and the glycosidic bonds to form. The chains of cellulose are joined together with hydrogen bonds, forming incredibly strong structures known as microfibrils. This strength is important because it stops plant cells from bursting when water enters by osmosis. Okay, so now pause the video and have a go at these questions. Question 1. Draw the structure of glucose. I'm sorry it's fairly difficult to see here, I had to squish it in the top. Question 2. What is the chemical formula for hexo sugars? It's C6H12O6. Name the three main disaccharides and list which monosaccharides each one is made from. So firstly you have maltose which is made from two molecules of alpha glucose. Then we have lactose which is made from glucose and galactose. And then you have sucrose which is made from fructose and glucose. Remember all three have glucose in them. Question 4. What does the Benedict's test detect? It detects for the presence of a reducing sugar, for example, monosaccharides. Question number five. Give an example of a non-reducing sugar, sucrose. Explain how you would test for a non-reducing sugar. So firstly, what you need to do is you boil um, your sample with dilute HCl for a few minutes to hydrolyze the glycosidic bonds. Then you need to neutralize the HCl with sodium hydrogen carbonate and finally test with Benedict's solution. Seven, what is the function of starch? Starch is used for storage of excess glucose in plants. Give one way in which it is adapted for this function. So you could have had that it is insoluble. It has a compact shape or a large surface area. What is the colour change in the iodine test if starch is present? It will go from orange to blue-black.
Question 10. What monosaccharide is cellulose made from? It is beta glucose. And question 11. What is the name given to the strong structures that cellulose chains form? And that is microfibrils. Thank you for watching. Music